good morning everybody today is uh, april 19th 2021 uh, we are here again on uh, bmn 612 seminar on south and southeast buddhism uh, today is the third week i believe yeah third week and uh, Last week uh, we were discussing about the uh, about how Buddhism uh, started to spread in India, <clears throat> the beginnings of the spread of Buddhism in India. And I saw some of you have done your homework, and some of you have not, uh, as I I've been telling you, not answered the question, but you have cut and paste something from the internet and send it to me. So how can I take it as an answer? So as I told you, you will lose your attendance as well as the homework. Uh, this is a uh, <coughs> MA class, so you should have certain discipline now. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, useless doing this thing. So please, uh, when you are asked to do something, uh, some homework, so focus on that thing at least. Uh, you should try to answer the question, not uh, whatever that you find in uh, internet, you cut that thing and paste and send it to me. That, that won't work. Please don't do so. If you do so, I'm not going to lose, you are going to lose. You, are, you will be losing your attendance as well as the, uh, <clears throat> what you may call the homework. So don't do that. Just read the question or the whatever the homework. Uh, and then focus on that thing. And you may uh, search online uh, things that are related to the question, homework. And then uh, you, you can come up with some answer. Otherwise, if you do something, uh, some, some irrelevant, uh, not not relevant at all. Something you you in, for the sake of saying that you send me the homework that won't work. Please don't do. Okay, <clears throat> today we are focusing on a uh, after the passing of the Buddha, uh, how this spread. You know, we are focusing on how Buddhism spread. Uh, in India uh, at the beginning. And today uh, the topic is how uh, after the passing of the Buddha, the, uh, who became the leader, who became the master <laughs> of Buddhism and how it, uh, how it spread in the early centuries. Uh, <clears throat> by now, you know, uh, when the Buddha passed away, uh, he did not uh, appoint any leader after him. That means that uh, when the Buddha was alive, some monks asked, uh, who is going to be the leader after, after you? And then the Buddha's answer was, uh, there won't be any leader. The leader will be uh, my teachings. Uh, he used the word Dhamma and Vinaya, my teachings, as well as the disciplines that I uh, set for the monks and nuns. That will be your master. That will be your leader. That will guide you. So no personal uh, leadership after the passing of the Buddha. <clears throat> so even, even during the time of the Buddha, he did not consider himself a leader, but he took uh, dharma, dharma or the teachings as the leader. So this is very interesting. <clears throat> Whatever the teachings that he gave, those teachings will be the, the, the guide, guider or the leader for the community of monks and nuns. Interesting point. And that uh, leadership. <clears throat> so when the Buddha passed away, the question arose. Now, Buddha said uh, the teachings, his teachings will be our, our guide. 
our leader. So now we should get together and reflect and organize the teachings of the Buddha so that it can be our leader. In another class, I, I know you, most of you were joining those classes and uh, you have been uh, uh, reading and talking about the uh, formation of the uh, Tripitaka. You know the word by now, formation of the Tripitaka, three baskets. <clears throat> That took place after three months, after passing three months of the death of the Buddha. So, so the monks got together and they rehearsed. They chanted the readings, uh, teachings of the Buddha. And they organized those teachings in such a way that they could carry it uh, for next generations. Uh, remember at the at this point, no writing, only <clears throat> the Buddha's teachings were carried by through memory. That is called oral tradition. Uh, Buddha, when he was giving some teachings, uh, the monks uh, remembered them and then they passed it to the other monks. By that, that is called the uh, oral tradition, handing down the teachings to the other generation orally, <clears throat> not written. So uh, the, the, after three months, the, the, that, that incident is called the uh, first council, you, you know by now. The first council, uh, the outcome of the first council was uh, that the Buddha's teachings were arranged or organized into what you may call Tripitaka or three baskets. His teachings were put into three different baskets according to their shape. Uh, for instance, uh, if, the, if a teaching is about uh, monastic discipline, some disciplinary rules uh, about the monks and nuns, then those teaching, teachings will go to the uh, uh, Vinaya basket, it is called Vinaya. Tripitaka, you know, Sutra, Vinaya and Abhidharma. So Vinaya basket will be uh, allocated for those kind of teachings. And if the teaching is about the uh, Nirvana or path of purification or whatever, some, some teachings of the Buddha, and those will be going to the uh, Sutra Pitaka basket of the uh, discourses. In, the, in that manner, they organized the teachings uh, into three different baskets. And that is, even today, it is popular in the Buddhist world as Tripitaka or three baskets. So this was one of the great uh, happenings after the passing of the Buddha. And that uh, in, the, in, the, in the spread of Buddhism, we are focusing on that side. In the spread of Buddhism, formation of the Tripitaka, Tripitaka was a really, really big step. The monks, when they were <coughs> traveling different parts of, the, uh, parts of India at this point, they were carrying this uh, legacy, the Tripitaka. There were different groups of monks who were recollecting, who were remembering the uh, texts and they carried it to the parts of India and they handed it over, handed it over in the sense they passed it to the other generation so that they can memorize it and carry on. That's how at the uh, beginning stage, that's how the teachings were circulated. Uh, teachings were uh, disseminated, uh, spread uh, in that manner. <clears throat> And uh, <clears throat> as time went by, about 100 years later, so we were talking, one point is at the three months, after the three months of the passing of the Buddha. <clears throat> and the next important event occurred in after <clears throat> 100 years later of the passing of the Buddha. Uh, that was the, uh, it was called the Second Council. Uh, the Second Council was uh, held because of some issues that 
arose among the community of monks. There were some monastic, uh, regarding the monastic disciplinary issues, uh, some problems arose, some disputes, some uh, disagreements. So in order to uh, clear these disagreements, in order to solve these disagreements, uh, monks got together uh, in a certain place in Rajagaha, and then uh, they again uh, looked at the Tripitaka, what they were carrying. Uh, they checked whether our disputes are okay or not. Are we following the correct path? Are we following the correct uh, Vinaya in, in this sense, discipline? Uh, the check and uh, they came to a conclusion that uh, certain things are not uh, not up to the vinaya, not tallying with the vinaya, original vinaya, original disciplinary rules. And uh, what happened was at that point, uh, certain other monks who who were disputing, who were in disagreement, they broke away from the main body, main body of the sangha. Uh, the disagreed monks broke away, and those uh, that the, the group who broke away was uh, a great number of monks. So <clears throat> they are named uh, as Mahasangika. Mahasangika means the greater community. Uh, so the thing is that when the disciplinary rules were, they, what they wanted to do was the certain disciplinary rules. They need, needed some, uh, some relaxation of the rules. The rules were too strict. Uh, depending on the time and the weather and other things, they wanted to uh, uh, certain, they'd want certain, uh, certain relaxation of the, these rules. But the original Sangha, the group, when they rehearsed the original teachings, they thought, oh, no, no, we are not going to change anything. We will pass it as the way we were, we were carrying it for century, one century. So the big group who broke away called Mahasangika, uh, the greater community, and this marks a uh, very important uh, point in history of Buddhism. The second council and with the second council uh, schism or the schools, different uh, sects, different schools arose and Buddhism uh, went into uh, certain uh, different, they broke into different branches. So <clears throat> when, when this schism occurred, what happened was the monks uh, went into different uh, parts of India and they were spreading the Buddha's teaching according to their interpretations. So the original Sangha is called the Yastaviravada or the Theravada, way of the elders. Elder means uh, older one, right? So they are coming from the original, uh, original Sangha and they thought we are the elders. The others, uh, the, their group was very big. Uh, so they were called a great community, Mahasangita. So the first split in the Buddhist uh, history was Theravada and Mahasangika, Staviravada or Mahasangika. So they were spreading Buddhism in different parts of uh, India. This Staviravada or the Theravada, way of the elders, uh, they went on to... Uh, north and northeast of India at that time and in central India and other parts uh, the other uh, greater community, Mahasangika. <laughs> and later, <clears throat> this uh, Theravada, the way of the elders, they were able to uh, maintain their unity for some time. And of course, there were some divisions in that group too, but somehow, they managed to exist over the centuries. And uh, that was the second council. The third council was held in King Ashoka's time. You have already read about him. I know for in other classes, you have uh, 
done some homework too. So please remember them now. Uh, I'm not going to talk about those things here today. So King Ashoka is one of the uh, very important personalities in history of Buddhism, especially when you are talking about the spread of Buddhism, he is the most important character. So third uh, council was held after 200 some years, 250 years after the passing of the Buddha. Uh, during that time, uh, the uh, necessity, the need arose that there should be a council to clarify things because uh, there were many, many uh, sects, many, many groups of monks uh, spreading Buddhism uh, any, everywhere. So the king wanted to have a unity among these, uh, among these uh, sects. And also he wanted to find out which one is correct. Uh, so with that idea, with the help of the, uh, you know, responsible uh, monks, he convened a council and that is called the Third Buddhist Council, which was held in, uh, in the city is called Pataliputra uh, after 250 years, roughly, after 250 years of the passing of the Buddha. So <clears throat> at this council, uh, you know, the group, uh, Way of the Elder, Theravada group, they got the chance because the Ashoka's uh, patronage, his help, throughout, through his help, uh, the, the, the group, Theravada group, got the chance, royal uh, patronage, and they were able to spread their teachings. Um, I would say um, uh, a greater part of the world, including Sri Lanka. So, you know, when you were learning about King Ashoka, he sent out uh, nine missionaries, nine uh, missionaries, like diplomatic missions. He sent to nine different uh, regions and countries. Uh, Sri Lanka is one of them. King Ashoka's own son and daughter, both of them went to Sri Lanka, carrying the message of the Buddha and they established Buddhism in Sri Lanka. What kind of Buddhism that they uh, established in Sri Lanka? It is not, none other than the Theravada, Theravada. So that is how in Sri Lanka, the tradition Theravada uh, got popularized, got established and still flourishing to date. And also out of the nine uh, missionaries, some missionaries went to uh, Thailand and Burma, uh, lower part of uh, Burma and Thailand. Swan, they call it Swanabhumi, uh, as recognized by the uh, historians. It, it should be uh, Thailand and uh, Burma, that part. Uh, so even today, Buddhism flourishes there as Theravada Buddhism. And also uh, he sent out uh, missionaries to uh, further regions of, uh, of India, the Western part of India, Northern part of India, and out of India to Greece and uh, some other Middle Eastern countries. So in that sense, <clears throat> uh, when we are talking about the spread of Buddhism, it is King Ashoka who uh, actually uh, really started it with, uh, with an organized mind. He organized uh, the spread of Buddhism with the royal uh, assistance, royal patronage. Uh, Buddhism got a, uh, how, do, how do I call it? It's got a, uh, a momentum. <laughs> the spread became, uh, got uh, gathered momentum and uh, it got the, the message of the Buddha reached to different parts of Indi uh, India and uh, let's say Asia. So this is a very important point in our class. King Ashoka is very uh, important, significant character in the spread of Buddhism. So you have already uh, read about him. So 
uh, I'm not going to talk about that longer. So he's very important character. So remember, after the passing of the Buddha, the first council after three months, uh, the very important thing that happened was the formation of the three baskets, Tripitaka. And the second council after the hundred years of the passing of the Buddha, what happened was uh, the split of the Sangha into two separate groups called Theravada and Mahasangika. And uh, afterwards, uh, split into many other sects. I remember the some other classes we talk about, 18 schools arose out of them. And then uh, again, 250 years after the passing of the Buddha, uh, during the time of the King Ashoka in India, Ashoka was a very powerful king, as you may know. Uh, another council was held, which is called the Third Buddhist Council. And that council, as a result of that council, uh, the spread of Buddhism gathered momentum. Uh, spread of Buddhism uh, started in a very uh, gigantic manner. Uh, so nine uh, missionaries uh, were sent out and uh, out of the nine missionaries, the long lasting uh, historical event was the uh, introduction of Buddhism to Sri Lanka. Uh, why it is very important until today, from that day on until today, uh, the same branch of Buddhism Theravada is uh, flourishing in that uh, little island. So it is very significant, the third Buddhist council. And <clears throat> So now uh, what you have to do is to uh, focus on uh, this tradition because we will be talking about the other two traditions too, Mahayana and Vajrayana. But this original uh, tradition, we call it original because it is uh, so close to the uh, Buddha, Buddha's time, uh, Theravada tradition uh, related with the first, second, third, uh, Buddhist councils. They are associated with the first, second, third, all the councils and the spread of Buddhism. So the Theravada tradition, way of the elders, if you want to translate it to English, usual translation is way of the elders, the teachings of the elders. Uh, <clears throat> that tradition uh, gained uh, popularity establishment in, in Sri Lanka. Up to that we are talking today. So focus on that tradition. Now you can do, uh, you go, because you are very popular, <laughs> you are very fond of doing cutting and pasting <laughs> things in, uh, in your homework. So please do a research. I'm not asking you to read any particular text today, but do a, a research online uh, about Theravada tradition, way of the elders, uh, and their formation and the early history of Theravada Buddhism. Focus on that thing, and uh, I will. And given in the homework section. Uh, I think that that's enough for today. So we are just covering the historical events in the early uh, centuries of the, of the Buddha, okay? Uh, so with that, uh, I conclude today's lecture. If you have any question, please email me. Uh, thank you very much. Have a good day.